Astronomy and photography are two hobbies that go together hand in hand. Our knowledge of the universe has greatly improved thanks to the advent of photography. Pictures from probes in deep space and telescopes on Earth have brought the heavens closer to us than ever before. Color photography has brought us some of the most exciting views of the world beyond our own. The colors of a celestial body tell us a great deal about an object, but these views can sometimes be misleading. Many times, a picture will present an object in a multitude of different colors and won't represent its true appearance. These false color images, while useful in revealing more information about a celestial body than a normal photograph, often distract us from the real view of things, and can make it hard to see the true colors of the universe. Astronomy is by and large a visual field of science. When the first cameras were developed, it wasn't long before they were put to use for astronomical research. Astrophotography has been around almost as long as the field of photography itself. Since astronomers aren't able to bring their subjects to the lab to study, they must make use of photography and other optical methods to make studies in their field. Examining the color and appearance of a celestial object through a camera or telescope can tell astronomers a great deal about it. The color of a star, for instance, can tell us about its temperature and its stage of life. A star that's blue will be hotter and have a shorter lifespan than a star that's red. Examining the light emitted from a star or reflected from a planet can tell us about its surface composition as well. By splitting a star's light through a prism, one can find that many dark lines appear in its spectrum. Making comparisons between the star's absorption spectrum and the emission spectrum of varying gases helps determine what makes up a star. When we learn how an element interacts with light on Earth, we can detect that element on the surface of another planet as well. Before New Horizons ventured past Pluto, we had to make use of this technique to learn about it as well as Charon and its other moons. But visible light doesn't give the whole picture. Visible light is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which represents the entire range of electromagnetic radiation. This ranges from low energy radio waves to high energy gamma rays. Branches of astronomy exist for every region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Utilizing all parts of the spectrum has allowed astronomers to make even more discoveries in their field than with visible light alone. Through radio astronomy, for example, we learned all about the existence of quasars, pulsars, and radio galaxies. Imaging the Crab Nebula in visible light shows an immense cloud of gas and dust left over from an ancient supernova explosion. An X-ray image of the nebula, however, reveals a giant pulsar in the center of it. More often than not, scientists like to create images of stars, planets, and galaxies and other celestial objects in more than one wavelength. Some of the most colorful astronomical images are made through the use of false color or color enhancement. This is done through a combination of different filters or through computer processing, and allows us to see more than what our eyes alone would detect. This false color image of Saturn was made through a combination of ultraviolet, violet, and green filters and shows us more detail in its atmosphere than a true color image would. These images, while great for revealing details hidden from human eyes, have the potential to be deceptive. The use of false color images in books and other media without a proper explanation can lead to a mistaken interpretation of what a celestial body looks like. At some point or another, you've likely seen at least one of the planets in the solar system in an unnatural view. Particularly this one, the planet Venus. In multiple books and various other media, I've seen many different depictions of the second planet from the sun, and virtually none of them represent the planet in its true color. So how do we image a planet or other celestial body in its natural color? The cameras on varying spacecraft are fitted with a multitude of different filters that allow them to see things in a variety of different ways, including visible light. For a spacecraft to see an object in natural color, it needs to use a combination of red, blue, and green filters. Red, green, and blue are the primary colors of the spectrum. Using a combination of these filters from the MESSENGER spacecraft, we can finally see what Venus really looks like. Now you may be wondering how we were able to get a color image of Venus like this one, where the clouds are stripped away. The colors in this image are simulated. Because Venus's atmosphere is so thick, the only way we can see to its surface is either to send a probe below the clouds or to map the surface with radar, as the Magellan probe did in the early 90s. 
The first spacecrafts to take color images of the Venusian surface were the Venera 13 and 14 probes in 1982. Standing on the surface of Venus, one would find that the sky and surface appear to have a reddish-orange tint. This is because that is the only color of light that can filter through the atmosphere. Eliminating the red from these images, one would find that Venus's surface is actually a dull gray color. Taking radar images isn't the same as taking actual photographs. To obtain a radar map, a probe must bounce radio waves off the surface of the planet, wait for them to bounce back, and analyze the echoes. Doing this allows a picture of the surface to be made using radio waves. Since radio waves are at much lower frequency than visible light, they can't see color. When processing the images from Magellan, scientists added the red and orange colors in, as they knew that was the color of light at Venus's surface. So now you know how images are produced by spacecraft in both true and false color. But what's this? Hmm, we have a few true color images of Mercury here, but they all look different. Why is that? Well, all three of these photos were made by combining red, blue, and green filtered images, but the brightness and contrast of each image is different. In the first view, each filtered image was stretched using the same settings of brightness and contrast. In the second image, each filtered image had their brightness and contrasts determined separately from one another. And the third image has the same settings of brightness and contrast as the first, but each filtered image has been adjusted to make each image span a similar range of brightness and contrast values. What I'm trying to get at with this is that every person sees color in a different way. The sensitivity to light and color in the human eye differs from one person to the next. As a result, there is not a universal perception of true color. More importantly, each filter carried inside a spacecraft's cameras only spans a narrow range of wavelength with no light detected between each filter's peak wavelength. Therefore, the cameras on an interplanetary spacecraft cannot perfectly replicate the functioning of a human eye. That being said, they do give us a reasonably good approximation of what we'd see if we were on or in orbit around another planet, and a lot more. We've had some great views of the solar system and beyond come to us from the cameras of unmanned spacecraft. Maybe someday we'll be able to venture out in space and see these worlds firsthand for ourselves. But as the old saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. And the pictures we've seen of our universe tell us quite a great deal about the space beyond our own. In more colors than we could ever imagine. But I see your true colors shine. Your true